high noon. It's high noon. It's a Wednesday. We all know what that means. Time for LA 2 m and a good lunch. So welcome everybody. My name is Eric Merriman from GenX Digital Marketing. Next to me here is Stacy Collin from Dollar Bill Printing, and we are welcoming you to another edition of Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing. Um, is there anyone here who's here for their very first time? Lots of first timers. Okay, welcome, folks. Welcome. Yeah, we got a great time and great speakers, so you're in for a real treat. Um, just so you know, this group does meet every Wednesday. So every Wednesday, except for like Christmas and New Year's, we meet. And Thanksgiving. Yeah, and we actually took out the month of August. Right. But, but besides that, every Wednesday, we'll be here. And, um, yeah, Thanksgiving. And we are a 501c3 nonprofit, so we're a, an actual nonprofit marketing educational organization. We're completely volunteer based, and um, we do everything by passing the hat. So, Stacy is our hat passer, um, she's our treasurer. And we basically pass the basket. It's a suggested $3 donation. It's not mandatory, but if you do donate, it goes to support our expenses uh, and promote the things that we do. So. And uh, as many of you know, we just had a great event. Well, well, we had a great event last week. I missed it. But Linda Detterman spoke out. Did you enjoy the web webinars? Yeah, you, everybody enjoyed that. That was great. And then two weeks ago, we had the Mike Tirico event, which raised uh, $2,800 for the Peace Neighborhood Center, which was very cool. So we're doing a lot of cool things. Now, let me ask you. Um, I'm guessing that there might be someone who has a kid in the room who didn't get one of these custom boobozuelas who might want one. We gave these out at the Mike Tirico event. I brought two. Is there anyone who didn't get one? Oh no, I got some. Oh. And I'm willing to donate them to <laughs> <laughs> We have one person who wants one back here, okay? You want one too? Yep. Okay, we have two. So we're going to use away. There you go. Yeah. They are kid friendly. Yeah, it, it's funny. The other day we, uh, we were downtown and there was a kid driving around in the back of his minivan blowing that out the window. Um, so it seems like the kids and the parents both enjoy it. So for any of you who are new, I encourage you to join our LinkedIn group. We have a big group on LinkedIn. Just search for LA2M on LinkedIn and join us. There's a lot of people there and uh, some good conversation. We also have a Facebook page, so I encourage you to like that. And uh, we have LA2M on Twitter and all the usual suspects. So, okay. Without any further ado, Oh, I just to give you an idea. For all you first timers, the format here is our speaker is going to speak for approximately 30 minutes or so. There will be some time for QA, but then at 12.45, we do introductions. So we pass the microphone and you stand up and you tell us your name and your company and if there's something we can do to help you. And we get around the whole room in 15 minutes and then we break at 1 o'clock. Sound fair? Sound good? Any questions? Okay. All right, so we have a great speaker today, uh, Brandon Chestnut. He's a friend of mine, a friend of probably a lot of yours. He's, uh, he's based out in Detroit area, does great work with identity PR, and um, does a lot with social media marketing. And he's going to be talking about building a market-based social media strategy. So please give a warm round of applause to Brandon Chestnut. Studies. I'm going to start kind of with a case study to give you an idea of what this concept is, uh, how I used it, what I learned, and what I think a lot of you can take back to your businesses. Um, you know, uh, social media is a really funny, funny thing, and we're all at different levels, uh, I think, in our organizations of how much we're integrating it, how much we're learning about it, how much our leaders understand it. And hopefully, this is giving you some ammunition. Um, and help you get a bit more targeted in the way you think about how you uh, look at creating your marketing mix. So, um, yeah. I think social media has opened a lot of doors, kind of like when email first came out. I mean, everyone was like, oh my gosh, this is 
so amazing. We are going to be able to talk to everyone so fast. It's going to be sweet. Still more telephone. I think you know a lot of that's like with social media right now. The gates are open. All these businesses are like, oh my gosh, we're going to get so many fans. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have all these Twitter followers. I mean, you, I mean, it doesn't matter because I talked to some guy in Brazil and he told me follows us on you know Twitter. It's sweet. So it opened these doors where you know we no longer were maybe so uh, or so contained in our in our marketing strategies that we're like we can go anywhere now we can do anything. You know that kind of came a lot with not only social media but the web. You know technology changed so much and, and and this mentality I think it's still popular now but it was extremely popular maybe a year or two years ago that this just opened up the floodgates. But I think what happened is that now. I go and I talk to a lot of companies and you know, we're like, so what are you guys up to with, with social media? Kind of the response is, well, we're doing it, LOL. You know, it's like they don't, they don't quite know how to articulate exactly what they're doing. They're, it's like, oh, you know, we're, I, I, I was at a new business meeting in Pennsylvania the other day and uh, <laughs> we started talking about you know, uh, ideas and, and how they use the web as an organization and what, and they, what they do. We talked about, you know, what, what, you know, strategically, what are you guys doing? And they're like, well, you know, it's kind of hard to have strategy when we're already doing it. Uh, that was the response. You know, they joined all these networks and they were, just, they were, they were worried about having a strategy because they were already doing something, which basically I pretty much ordered the check and that's sort of the pot of coffee. Uh, because there's going to be a long conversation. It took some eye opening. And, and, and I'll be honest, I mean, I think everyone's gone through this phase where we're like, oh, we have to really do this. We have to integrate it into, you know, how we're communicating with customers and prospects. Um, and sometimes we don't quite know exactly what we're doing. That maybe it's kind of like, um, I was at part of a WWJ panel last week, and uh, there was one of, the, one of the guys there was from this e-commerce company called Digital Retail, and he, just, he talked about like analogies like how it's kind of like what's the ROI of going and playing golf with a client. It's like, you kind of have to do it. You may not get anything out of it, but if you don't, I mean, it's probably going to be, you know, come back on you. It's going to be, you're going to look pretty stupid. Um, or it's going to maybe affect your relationship. That's kind of like, you know, how a lot of the social media uh, uh, approaches were, where it's like, we have to do this. Maybe we don't know exactly what the ROI is, but man, so many people are doing it, and there's so many exciting stories. You know, let's create a fiesta movement and an Old Spice guy, you know, whatever that may be. Um, people got really excited, but now I think we're getting to the point where it's almost like there's, there's number one, there's leadership fatigue. Where uh, if you haven't proven some type of result now, that's not only both quantitative and qualitative. You're going to get a lot of people looking at you differently and asking a lot of uh, maybe uh, crazy questions that you don't know how to answer yet. Um, or you're going to be focusing on such small, tiny metrics and strategies that are maybe way too broad that they're not really going to pay and pay off and do anything for your business or for your client's business if you're, you're managing your uh, those of you who do marketing for a living. So. I like to think of the concept of boundaries. I think we need boundaries in when we design new media strategies. And I know some people, they, they, it's very hard for them to take a stance in the world of new media. Because, oh, there's so many X factors, so many, so many things that could happen. You know, we're dealing with people, and oh my gosh, all these things could happen, and we don't want to say it's this or that. I think you're going to see a lot more now people taking stances in terms of how they approach new media, how they approach you know, strategy, because everyone's starting to come to the table now. And they're basically going to say, this is how we're going to do it. And, and I'm a big, faith, uh, big fan of boundaries. I like to, to put things in a box and operate within that box because it's something that I know I can, I can build. It's something I can possibly, you know, hopefully control in some ways. Um, and I can design the metrics around it. So thinking about boundaries uh, is really important. I talked about the, that open gate concept where the world was at our fingertips. Well, if you look at your business and where the, you know, the referrals and the prospects come from, you know, those of you who are doing business around the world, I applaud you, that's awesome. But, you know, I work for a professional services company, and a lot of the clients I work with are professional service. You know, their business is coming from referrals. Sometimes it's people within a 90 mile radius that they want to go meet with. They don't want to leave the state, they don't want to fly anywhere because they realize the real value is their expertise and what they can provide. So they need to be able to meet with certain people. Uh, you know, it's kind of like you sit down and you start thinking about, um, as a company, when you're building a business plan or you're coming up with how you're going to prospect people, you build these lists of your ideal client, you know, where they are. It's like, you know, think about geographically, psychographically, um, um, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, services they need, maybe the problems that they're having. It works very similar in the new media world. You know, when you start thinking about, um, you know, defining your audience base and translating it to the web. And there's a lot of cool tools out there that allow you to do that. Um, if you ever read Groundswell, um, talk about like Forrester Technographics Ladder, you can look at age and uh, adoption rates of, of uh, 
different types of content. Um, you know, you, you can use these tools to better understand your audience and how they work on the web. So if you have a piece of paper somewhere in your business, you know, some line around that has your ideal client on there, use that to understand how it translates to the web. Uh, and a lot of what we find is that geographic uh, uh, location plays a key role in understanding where you're going to get business. I know we're in the global competition model now where we can compete against anybody, but sometimes that's just where your business is. Um, if you want to find people within a certain geographic area, or you may want to enter a brand new market, you're ready to expand, and you want to start thinking about how you can target people there. So this is hopefully some things I can shed a light on uh, a little bit. So a little bit about my case study. Uh, last year, uh, I had a meeting with Verizon Wireless, and uh, we were talking about some PR stuff. Um, the bread and butter of my agency is PR. That's what we do. It's still a part of the marketing mix. Uh, it's not going away by any means. Um, we like to focus on an integrated component, um, you know, web, print, PR, social, everything. So anyway, we're having this conversation with Verizon Wireless, and um, you know, they're a brand like a lot of large, large companies out there that are, that are involved, they're doing a lot of things, um, but they're such a big company with so many layers, they're like, well, how do we get people on the ground to start thinking about new media and integrating it to how we you know, work with, with customers, how we work with promoters, detractors, and, and make it part of our business strategy. So we had this conversation, and, and basically what we came out of it is, you know, Brandon, we want you to build a pilot program for market. And we don't care, well, we care, but we don't, we don't want to know necessarily what's happening coast to coast. We want to know what's happening in the new media world just in Michigan. This is the only place we want you to focus. Everything else is great. It's going to help us better understand what people think about our business, you know, what they think about our products, our service, our, our relationships we have, you know, what problems are occurring. But we only want to know what's happening in Michigan. You know, this is pretty interesting because, you know, a lot of stuff I've done with different brands where we're all over. Uh, they were in uh, you know, coast to coast. Uh, uh, some were really, really big companies. Some were really, really tiny startups. Um, so this was, an, for me, this was an interesting challenge. How do I build something from the ground up for piloting a program only in Michigan? Um, so we sat down with some people and uh, we started talking about, uh, you know, what are the program rules? And we pulled in, there's a lot of people that got involved that had nothing to do with marketing. So if, if you know, you're in that position in your company right now, and you're not meeting with people that have nothing to do with marketing to help frame your strategy, you're doing yourself a disservice because you can present all this great information, but they're not going to care because it doesn't pay off. Um, um, to the, uh, the company's goals. I mean, the company's goals have nothing to do with marketing, but if they don't hit it, marketing still looks bad. Everyone looks bad. <coughs> Those are the organizational goals. So we started talking about, you know, as, as a brand, what are some things we really wanted to focus on? Um, we talked about creating conversations. You know, uh, I like to think people that are involved in new media, um, who we like to create conversations, and we're online, and we're talking about brands and products. The whole, the whole thing you've heard about from a lot of different authors and, and ideas, we share more than ever. So let's create some conversations about the brand, and we've got a positive. Um, reduce churn, this is a huge, huge business goal, um, especially for a wireless company right now. I think we're at the point where more people have phones you know, in their house sometimes than TVs, or maybe you know, they, they have two devices, one personally, one for work, or everyone in their family has a device. Kids are getting cell phones younger and younger. What does that mean? That Less and less people potentially are buying new phones. They're they're making a decision every two years, you know, with their products, you know, their life cycle of, with the company. Do I want to stay or do I want to go? Um, and a lot has changed with how people perceive, you know, buying a, buying phones. It's no longer, uh, you know, I'm going to look necessarily for network. I'm going to look for device. You know, how many of you in here have iPhones? Okay, and you know, AT and T has had some problems, right? I mean, you don't care because you love that iOS device. You're like, man, this is amazing. You know, it's, it's probably influenced a lot of, of your purchasing decision. Um, and maybe you don't have problems with AT&T. If you do, well, um, please send them a letter or something. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, that, but that influences, you know, how people purchase. So, you know, how do we reduce churn? Keep customers happy. Keep them engaged. How do we amplify promoters? You know, talk about that promoter score. Um, you get your promoters, detractors, maybe give people in the middle. We want to amplify brand champions. We want to give them a voice and let people know that, we're number one, we're listening, and number one, we thank them for their business. We want to you know, address detractors. Um, now this is a little bit different than customer service necessarily um, because my role was working with people that their primary role was not customer service. Their role was public relations. Um, you know, they could not spend a ton of time you know, addressing issues online. We had to be very, very um, uh, careful in addressing you know, the, the problems we addressed. A lot of times it was 
uh, issues that people can self-diagnose. If you see them online, oh, I have a bill problem. Oh, I have, you know, my phone won't do this. There's all this information that's available to you online, and that's just for wireless devices, for any type of technology that sometimes people don't think of self-diagnosing. And those are sometimes problems that we, you, you can't address, um, act, you know, accurately through the web. Um, but people that had individual issues or ones where customer care drops the ball, um, you know, because that happens with every company. Um, with those are issues we can hopefully address. Um, how can we share news that's local and pertinent and important? And how do we support sales? That's really important. You know, uh, you're talking about a, a giant entity that you know pushes out a product via you know a, a huge, huge online sales channel and regional stores uh, as well as agents. How do we support these people and make sure we're driving business to them? So we sat down and started coming up with our strategy. Um, I started thinking about, well, okay, I'm looking at one market, what do I do? How do I, how do I start formulating these ideas? So I started doing some searching and, and looking up things and using some tools. And kind of what I found is that, you know, I don't know how many of you use a, a listing tool, Read 6, Scout Labs, Versian. Anybody paying money to listen on, online, Garrett? Okay, um, if you're not, you should be setting aside money right now or going to your clients and saying, give me $500 extra per month to do this because it will make things Number one, so much easier for you, but number two, it'll give you so much more data to report back. Um, however, in this instance, there's one thing where I think a lot of monitoring tools are kind of, you know, they're not quite there yet, is understanding how to search pretty rapidly. You know, a lot like Google search, Yahoo, MSN, uh, with, with uh, tools like Radiant 6, Scott Labs, things like that, you're usually coming up with search strings to define what you're looking for. You know, the poorly in terms of and, or, not, things like that. Um, Sometimes they're not as effective as you want them to be, or what you get isn't, isn't really what you're hoping for. So I started playing around, and I, I went online, and I realized, wow, I get the most powerful tool in the world to access local market conversations, and that's Twitter search. People don't think about it. They'll go to search.twitter and start typing in search terms based on geographic location, based on mile radius, things like that. And most people put their location in their Twitter account, unless they say they're on the moon or something like that. You know, they're actually pretty accurate. Um, or they're to the next largest metropolitan area. Um, and I was like, man, there's so much, so much data that's coming out of here. This is unbelievable. Um, so we started designing workflow around, you know, just using, you know, advanced Twitter search. We built a whole strategy around using it as a as a gateway to market conversations. So we started using it to listen to conversations. We pulled in RSS feeds from multiple keywords and search terms into a hub um, that my team controlled. I work with a team of three people, and that's all we do all day. Uh, is new media. So we're holding in all these conversations and we're looking at them and set, and we were like, wow, there's all these conversations going on about the brand, about competitors, about you know things that are really important to the company that relates to their strategy. Um, we started filtering keywords. We went in there knowing exactly what keywords we wanted to go for. You know, you know it, it's your business, you're thinking about services. For them it was products, it was sentiment, it was um, uh, mentions of other profiles like VZW support, which is their customer care support. Good or bad. We, want to, we just want to know what's going on. We want to pulse on this information. Um, we then segmented all these groups based on need and action. So um, if Derek were being online and complaining that his, his battery was going bad, you know, I didn't necessarily have to go offline with Eric or, or, or Derek and be like, oh my gosh, we need to do all these things. No, I'm trying to say, did you go to a store? You know, very simple action, traffic cop like. But if he had a very serious issue, how would we address it and move it up? Or if we just said, man, I love Verizon, this is awesome. That's great, and I know there are other companies that kind of uh, feel the same way that they love that, but maybe they can't get to it that day. Maybe they can't say thank you. Uh, they just don't have the manpower resources and time. Uh, uh, reporting findings. This was really important, um, and I'm going to show why this was because we were tweeting for this company. Um, we focused specifically on transparency. We realized that as an agency, we can't always solve the problems of a consumer if you don't have access to information that's really important and protected. So we said, all right, well, how do we how do we report, report findings? Um, how do we uh, determine the right type of engagement? And then how do we track the sentiment? When you start talking with someone, how do they change over time? Um, there's a great tool called Conversion, which is good for like long-term engagement over like enterprise stuff. So if you're a big company and you're looking to track people over time, you know, rating six is only 30 days pretty much. Conversion is great for long-term conversation. Or if you're looking for something a little cheaper, code tweet, you can talk with people and actually thread all your conversations, which is really, really cool. Um, we're a big fan of that. So we started to do a field test. We took our contact, who's a market rep. Some of you may follow her on Twitter already. It's BZW Michelle, Michelle Gilbert. She's awesome. Um, she was totally open to the idea last year. We said, let's, let's try this. 
you know, let's see what happens. You know, uh, she was busy. You know, she was already doing a lot of work with, with traditional media. Um, how do we fit this into her schedule? And quickly, we found out that this is awesome. Um, that we were getting so much response so fast that we were scaling up all the time. Like, oh my, you know, even just starting in Michigan, it was like, whoa, whoa you know, the, the response from people and the, and the issues we were addressing were, were just moving so quickly that we started growing the program really, really fast. You know, we started, we went from one state to three in a very short period of time and generated, you know, 1,700 plus mentions, you know, just through one person. I'm not talking about brand wide. One person generated 1,700 mentions and 900 customer conversations um, over a period of about six months. And this is someone that has a whole other job and she's trying to, you know, be a, a part of this. This was huge. Now we basically, or we took on top of that, started, you know, the people we're reaching out to at location base put phones in their hands. Let's go a step further. We had over 100 influencers with phones in their hands. Everyone from Jason Falls out in Kentucky to people that maybe only have 100 Twitter followers, but what they say is really important. The people that follow them are, are, you know, actually listen to what they say or retweet it, you know? Um, a good way to do that is if you're not using Gradient 6, I could keep you mentioning it, but it's awesome, is you can get an influencer index and tell some, someone by uh, basically what their reach is and how uh, influential they are. Um, it helps you, like I said, better visualize uh, the importance of the people you talk to. Um, so we quickly went from one market to like a dozen in less than a year. So now we're doing this for all over the, uh, the Midwest. We're also even targeted more. We're putting people in stores, retail sales reps that work within 25 miles of their store. People start talking about, man, I'm having a bad time with Sprint. These guys will go, hey, well, I'm only a few miles away. Why don't you come talk to me? We'll generate a sale out of it. So we're, we're piloting these programs and getting them more targeted and targeted. And it's all based on geography. Everything we're doing is, is market-based. It's not coast-to-coast. -coast. It's very, very focused. And it all started with a simple, simple free tool, which was Twitter search. So what did I learn from all that? Uh, um, it kind of helped me think about things differently and how I should be approaching strategies for companies that are focusing on specific markets or looking to expand or maybe they're realizing that where they are, they're not even getting business out of their backyard because they need it. So Twitter's the gateway to local conversations. Um, if you don't know what's happening in your backyard, you don't know what's happening when you're trying to generate business, you're not going to be able to go up the food chain and, and really uh, sell why you're doing new media. Um, if, and this may even help you figure out that what's going on in your backyard Social media is wrong, you know, might not be right, you know, for, for a specific sales strategy. Maybe it's more focused on the education piece or targeting a specific niche customer group. Um, it will help you understand the volume of conversation within, like I said, a defined geographic area. Um, if you haven't used search.twitter before, I recommend using it. Experiment. Um, you can pull those feeds into a reader, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, Platforms are connected. Uh, people can ask me, well, wow, Brandon, you're dealing with all these people in all these markets. Well, what if you're not on Twitter? What if they're a blogger and you're, you're trying to figure out how to get in front of these people? Well, I think we've reached the point where all platforms in some way are working together. Um, I think if you're a blogger and you're not using Twitter to grow your audience, you're really, really missing out. And I like to think that most bloggers are using it, even if they're just syncing posts and then pushing them out and not even talking to anyone. Um, you want a good experiment? run a search for the word new post and see what populates. I have it constantly running uh, through a, a persistent search just to see what pops up. And some of it's complete garbage, but some of it's actually really, really good. Um, I do the same thing for social media. Whenever somebody mentions social media within 50 miles of Detroit, I want to know about it. So I want to see what they're talking about. It's a lot of information overload, but I always find new people that I can talk to that are, maybe they are interested to share information or we're just looking to hang out, who knows. Um, so these platforms are all connected and they're working together. If they're using Tumblr, they're probably pushing things out online, like I said, within a certain uh, market radius. So think about how you're able to use Twitter as a gateway through other platforms, to bloggers, to things like that. That's part of your, your new media strategy. Um, and I think one thing that's really important goes back to business is creating bulletproof systems. I work with a team and we plan this out to know specifically what everyone's role is and how we're reporting data. Um, we, if, if you're just trying to kind of figure this out over time and not always going back and changing things, changing search, changing ways you, you look at data, changing reaction time, uh, uh, things like that, you're never gonna get anywhere. Bulletproof systems is what every company strives to have. And if you don't have it for your new media team, or if you are the new media team, 
start mind mapping it out. Get visual and think about all the steps you need to take. Um, if you were looking at a, you know, just doing business here in Ann Arbor, and you said, all right, well, here's the system. We find someone, we engage with them. The next step is within one week, you know, we're going to take it to another, another type of medium, phone call, lunch, whatever. That's, that's a system. But make it bulletproof. Um, make sure there's no chinks in the armor and things like that, or there are kinks that can maybe have an issue with uh, uh, knocking things down or changing uh, 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 how much time you spend. That's always really going to be a problem. So how do we apply all these crazy concepts to your business? Um, you know, everyone, you could say that oh, Verizon's a big company. You know, why, I, maybe I sell a product or service. Um, you know, why would I be interested in using these things to, to target people? Or, you know, I'm not selling a phone, I'm selling legal expertise, or I'm selling marketing services or something like that. Why, why does this stuff make sense? Well, I still think there's some things I can give you, hopefully even if it's just one thing that will hope, add something to your toolbox or make you think differently about how you are, you know, reviewing information. Um, I think the easiest way of doing it is, is starting simple. Segment and scrub your mailing list. Um, that is the lifeblood of any business, especially if you're small to medium size, it's your mailing list. It's not your new media presence, it's not your Facebook page, it is your mailing list. Um, it is the opt-in referral engine that drives everything. Um, and is everyone, anyone in, in here sending out an email blast regularly for their business or a time? I have a couple people. Uh, seriously, look into it. It is a passive way to constantly touch people. Why I think it's important is that there's tools now available I can scrub a mailing list and segment people based on where they're active online. I can look at my mailing list for a company or my mailing list for, for identity, tell you how many of those people are active on LinkedIn with public accounts, how many are on Facebook, how many are on Twitter. Touch them individually by sending them specific blasts. You know, did you know that we're here? Did you know that we're there? This is the type of things that we share and set community expectations. Um, you're able to do this through MailChimp. It's a great service. Uh, it's not free, but it's the cost of doing business and it's extremely extremely, extremely powerful. Even if you have no desire to understand what's going on or, or to participate, you maybe you just want a little bit of intelligence about how active your audience is, use this service. Um, it's called Social Pro. Social Pro. See people tend to it now. So, uh, and right now I think it's, it's actually uh, free until the end of the year. I don't know. I have to look at that. But uh, it, it's, it's great. So you have a mailing list of 1,000 or 10,000. Scrub. Go down and segment it. Think about how you're gonna, you know, act, add actions to them. Existing clients, prospects, where are they active. Um, if you don't do that, you're kind of just hitting everybody at once. It's like adding, you know, join us on Facebook. At the bottom of every e blast, you send out. Well, who do, how do you know if they're active on Facebook? You know, or if they're they're actually gonna take the effort. Target the ones that you know are that around them. Um, view location specific web analytics. Um, I spent a lot of time the past year. Trying to become an analysis ninja, that's what I like to call it. Uh, if you have any of you read uh, Web Analytics 2.0, um, talk about reporting versus analysis. Reporting is you get your Google Alerts report or Google uh, Analytics report at the end of every month or week. It tells you all these numbers, but actually uh, understand how to analyze data is a whole other skill set. Um, you don't have to be an expert, but you can see things and look at look at them and correlate them to how your business uses the web. You know, it's called map overlay. Helps you understand where people are coming from um, when they connect to your website. Um, you may think that everyone's <coughs> coming from a certain market when in reality it's elsewhere. Um, and you, you can also tell it by referring sites, things like that. Spend some time digging into your analytics or hire someone as a, as a freelancer or something just to give you some, some, a better idea of where people are. Because um, you can start building a strategy around it using the tools that I talked about. Um, so, location-specific web analytics are really key. If you don't use Google Analytics, there's probably something within your paid service that has a, a similar feature. Uh, because we're getting better and better about understanding where people are coming from. Uh, creating a hub. Uh, I talk about using search.twitter as a way to aggregate uh, location-based conversations. What needs to go somewhere? You can't just be going back to search.twitter every day and seeing what's being said. Um, what's great about um, uh, using RSS feeds through Twitter is that if you notice, sometimes searches disappear after a week, um, or even less than that, due to the volume of tweets that are out there. Usually, an RSS feed will stay longer than a week. So if you don't have the time to go through a bunch of data, um, you'll have it for longer. Um, and what you can do is, when you do your search, you can literally just pull it into Google Reader or NetBots. It's one of my favorites, NetBots. Um, 
and use that as, as a way to pull in all the information and segment it by the, the type of conversation or keyword. Um, if you don't want to use, or you prefer not to use an RSS reader, use something like a social monitoring tool as your hub. Um, the reason I, I like using that uh, as well is I can then take the conversations I find in search and translate them there and, and kind of segment them and, and make notations and, and do lots of things that I really can't do um, unless I'm using a special program. So, you know, creating a hub is really key. Local influencer mapping. There are a ton of free tools out there that'll help you find bloggers, find peer influencers, find discussion boards. Um, if you don't have access to a paid monitoring tool, if you do, a lot of this can be done for you, um, at least helping you understand their reach. But use stuff like Alltop. You know, if it's a big market, you can look at what blogs are listed on there. Um, I think Twitter Grader, even though like Charlie Curve always says it's kind of like the BCS where they really don't understand the point system, it still finds people that are considered influential within certain markets. You can do state, you can do city, as long as it has a certain uh, uh, volume of users. Um, that's, that's really, really key. Uh, Technorati, don't call it dead yet. It's, you know, a lot of people are kind of shying away from it, from it because it's changed its whole model on uh, authority, but you can still find blogs based on location in there. Um, you can search, like I did for Grand Rapids, and find a bunch of bloggers and, and people that you may want to work with. That's part of your strategy. Another one is Listorius. I think this is a hidden gem, you know, because it's basically all these people that have created lists to tell you who they think are, are influential within a certain market. So uh, spend some time on there. Use key terms. You know, you can only you can do by key person or you can do by list. Uh, I just did a search for Ann Arbor and I can find there's one for all that for all media. If you're working on behalf of a company and corporate comms, you know, reporters use Twitter too. Find a way to incorporate that and, and build a relationship. And what I found is that if you're active on Twitter and the reporters are, you're kind of like one of the cool kids, as long as you don't spam them all the time. And just say like, oh my gosh, you get my email about that story. So that's another conversation. Uh, defining conversations, I think this is a step that a lot of people miss. They, uh, they just get out there and they start communicating with people like traditional networking. So they always have to be thinking about the types of conversations they're looking for. Uh, you need to define keywords ahead of time. Just like you would if any of you were in the practice of search engine optimization, you define keywords ahead of time. You define keywords with conversation. It helps you kind of make a, a, a lightning rod for where you want to start, and it's going to pull things in from search. Uh, so you know, list out those keywords and think like people do, and don't always use a very specific term. And, and also think about uh, misspellings. Uh, people sometimes you know don't want to have things in there correctly. Um, so think about those things. Uh, conversation types. Uh, are you gunning after uh, discussions about uh, competitors? Are you gunning after uh, discussions related to specific news items? Think about the types of conversations you want to, to approach uh, and list those things out. Sometimes it's a piece of paper or an iPad. Uh, just type things out and have a list on it because everyone's on the same page. They understand what they're going for. Uh, and the last time is problems and actions. Um, it, part of your new media strategy is to elicit some type of response or solve some type of problem or create some type of action. Know what those things are because that's going to help you determine you know, kind of the workflow of these people that you find in these conversations. If I find someone talking about a competitor and my action is, well, I want to ask them what their problem is, well, then know we're going to send them after that. Plan the whole thing out, the ideal conversation from start to finish. And usually the finish is hopefully, you have more money. So uh, just plan all that stuff out. You have to have that written down. Um, create location specific landing pages. Um, I think search and, and new media are you know, like this. It's, they, they, they need to work together. So if you have an SEO uh, uh, specialist inside your office or you're thinking about uh, how we can change our website to support new media, and you're targeting a specific <coughs> market, like here in Ann Arbor, start building location-specific landing pages that you can point people to. If I'm dealing with someone in Florida, and what we're offering there is completely different than what we had in Michigan, I need to make sure I'm pointing them in the right direction and it exists on my site. Plus, I think we're in a, in, in a uh, world right now where if you make a statement online that's not on your website to back it up, you're potentially shooting yourself in the foot. This is especially important for big, big companies. Uh, they're already doing that. You know, you see that we engage in types of conversations on forums and on Twitter. They're always pointing people somewhere. And we always talk about how links are, are important. They, you know, they're, they're currency in some respects. They, uh, they're, they're what you know, actually solidifies the statement. Make sure you have links to support every conversation you have. Or slowly move the conversation to a point where you can offer a link back to where people need to go. Um, 
And then also, on the more passive side, location-specific landing pages will probably pay off in search. Um, if you notice now, when you go to Google, it's pretty much already filling in your, your location uh, in the search engine. Um, so it's, it's already been pulling in Google places and things like that. Um, it's getting smarter about you, and it's designing more information for you. And a lot of that's going to be location specific. So if you can build landing pages around that, that's going to help your search. Uh, and then last thing is invest in reporting tools. Social media takes money. If you are not investing it, uh, if you're relying specifically on free tools, I don't think you're going to get enough out of it. Um, uh, there's a lot you can do and a lot of great things out there, but spending a little bit of cash and, and, and investing in a reporting tool, uh, I, like I said, I recommend a rating six. Scout Labs is great if you are um, a bit more on a budget, especially also does some big, bigger search uh, type of functions. Put some money into it. Um, you know, at least test it out for a few months. See if it works. If it makes your time easier. If you, you're, uh, you're able to be more efficient. Consider, and that'll help you from the market perspective with these searches and being able to move things, you know, and, and eventually, as they like to say, move the needle. So um, this presentation is available online at bit.ly slash LA2M identity. Uh, the slideshare was down last night, but uh, if you check back in about an hour, I'll convert it and make sure it's up there. But the link is active. Um, plus, it has my contact information on there, Twitter, LinkedIn, email. But I'll be here to answer questions and hand out cards. Um, that's pretty much it. So I, I definitely want to open up to questions. Uh, that was a lot. Uh, if your head's not spinning, I didn't do my job. <laughs> Who's got a question? Questions, questions. Hey, Kyle's a question. Kyle? Yeah. Not a good question. Chris, got one up here? Maybe. My head's spinning, so I'm uh, hard at it. No, it's no problem. My body's. Anyway, um, you talked about the ROI and yeah. the golf game. And that makes sense to um, us that use the, the media. Yeah. But in uh, large corporations like Verizon mm -hmm. or uh, Chrysler or Ford, they also look for uh, ROI. Mm -hmm. And some people that are sad, not savvy, but zealots with the uh, technology, yeah. they say, oh, well, the uh, dot the email address matched with the sales of the email address. That means we get credit for that too. Okay. Which is another extreme, which is the opposite extreme. Okay. Meaning you get more credit than you deserve. And then no credit, okay. Uh, what would be a realistic uh, gauge if you really needed to give an ROI? How, how would you go, uh, what would your approach be? Um, I think it needs to be a mix of qualitative and quantitative. Uh, qualitative being uh, conversions. Um, business does not happen on Twitter, it does not happen on Facebook, business happens on your website. Um, if you can start uh, putting a system in place to track, uh, you know, referring sites into sales cycle, into moving through the funnel, into actually convert, convert, uh, converting, um, that's important. It's also up to the new media person's job to relay the types of people they're engaging in conversations with to if it's a sales team, if it's leadership. You know, I'm conversing with someone online and that's going to lead to a meeting. They need to know about it immediately because um, it's then up to them to kind of close them. Uh, I would, I would love to say that you know, there's one specific answer, uh, but if your leadership is very skeptical and they're not bought in, it's going to be a lot harder to sell them on something. That's why you're better off focusing on one simple key element and, and putting all your energy into that so you're doing it so well that they're willing to give you more, more room. Um, an example of that would be uh, looking at analytics and seeing um, you know, uh, how new media influences your overall uh, uh, search engine uh, referrals, your overall uh, bounce rate, are people coming back to do content, are they leading to the contact page? Sometimes it's, I want, I want you know, people to come in from a certain platform and actually go through my website. I want them to go through it and see how it works. Um, usually that takes a dialogue um, and to understand where you can best support them. If it's a sales team, they may say, hey, you know what, we don't care about Twitter, we don't care about Facebook, but if you can give me ammunition and referral or, or for referrals, that's your new media strategy. You know, sometimes uh, we're, we're really bad at following up. And if you're in a, a, a team where you have sales professionals, they sometimes need extra ammo to, uh, to give it to referral sources to bring business in. Um, I'm, I'm trying to answer your question, but it's kind of like, you know, like you said, two different extremes. Focus on qualitative and quantitative. What can you give that has numbers, and what can you give that actually has a start and an end success? And then reach for those things. All right, we have another question back yeah. here. Uh, 
Um, so when you talk about measuring, <coughs> pardon me, measuring analytics and whatnot, there's a lot of uh, contradictory tools that will look at the same general information, provide you conflicting information. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, qualify that and where do you decide, how do you decide to weight those sources? Now you're talking like in terms of web traffic or like just a, a social media analytics? Social or? media in general. You know what? It's never going to be perfect. Uh, to say everything is, is fantastic is not. I mean, there's been studies on there where they'll take like viral heat and radiant sex and see to two totally completely different types of, of results. Um, that's why a lot of companies I know that have the budget have more than one. Um, I, you know, it, I think it's more important to focus on the outcomes necessarily than you know what what exists on a on a certain uh, uh, type of reporting tool uh, or search tool because if you, you sit there going oh wow we have two completely different types of data um, it's going to be really hard to act on I think we just need to make a decision you know if it's your role for the new media person you got to basically put your foot down and say this is how we're going to do it this is how we're going to measure it and this is how, how what's going to happen like I said we're in this phase where people are they're not willing to to, to make a make a, 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 a beeline for something because they're, they're afraid this world is too unique and dynamic. If you've got two reporting tools, sometimes maybe you need to stick with one, you know, and just say this is how we're going to do it because there's too many X factors involved. Um, but you know your leadership better than I do. <laughs> maybe mine's a bit more understanding or the, 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 the clients I work with. Um, but that's that's what I would do. Is focus on one and and, and make a make a uh, strategic decision and see what the outcome is. Because if it pays off and you got two separate sets of data, you're not going to care that you have another set. You got the outcome out of it. Yes. Yes. Uh, I was wondering when you have products for sale, physical products, um, and you, your strategy is simply to push out information <coughs> on Twitter and Facebook. Um, how can you effectively do that? And then will you be effective, or is it just a waste of time? A uh, waste of time, uh, at least as far as I'm concerned. Um, social media for a reason. It's, it puts someone in a seat where they can be an advocate. Um, they can speak on behalf of the brand. They can make decisions. Sometimes, especially if you're selling a product or service and you want to get active online, you need to find groups, blogs, people that you can give product to to start. Um, I work a lot with a lot of different companies like that. They have a box product. You know, they do both e-commerce or maybe retail, but it's like, how do we put this in the hands of people? We use new media as an avenue and a channel to get to these groups and say, hey, you know what? You interested in checking this out? You know, they, we focus more on the blogger piece than we do technically the, the conversation generation um, because it's way more effective and we get reviews out of it that we can reuse multiple times. Um, I think if you're just pushing things out, yeah, you can get results on it, but it's not going to be as good. It's, it just isn't. You know, um, the only only case where I think that would, is 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 maybe okay to do that. You're highly regulated. You're public, um, or you're you're operating under some type of legislation where you can't engage in conversation for fear of a lawsuit or whatever. Uh, and there are companies that do that. Um, so I don't want to say 100% that way, but I'm leaning way more towards the conversation side. Uh, I think it's way more effective. You're able to generate some type of exposure and hopefully convert. Okay, let's uh, let's give Brandon a big round of applause. There's a lot, a lot of good information. I hope everybody took good notes. There's a lot of tips and tricks in there. Um, so now we're going to pass the microphone around. Let's start over here with Kyle. If you can please stand up and just give us your name, your company, and briefly, if there's anything we can help you about, we'll get through the whole room in 15 minutes, no problem. And here we go. My name is Kyle, uh, Kyle Stoof with Ann Arbor Radio, uh, which is Ann Arbor's 1071 W4 Country Sports Talk 1050 and Business Talk 1290. I say that about a thousand times a day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have an ask. Um, if you'd like to uh, talk to me about radio advertising, how it works, uh, building a brand uh, through audio media, um, I can help you out with that. We're having a one-day sale coming up next Wednesday uh, where you can lock in rates for the year at 50 to 70 percent off. So talk to me now if you want to make that decision on Wednesday. Hello, I'm Donna Lissinski with Think Stretch. We're a summer learning program that schools use in Send Home a Workbook. Um, we are just getting in, um, we're just starting to actively promote our company, and if anyone has a customer relations management system, a contact database system that they use and like, we'd love to hear about it. We're struggling to find one. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Amy Chair with Think Stretch, um, and I'd like to wish my business partner Don Wilson to be happy birthday today. Hi, I'm Ed Farrell with Crowd Juice Corporation. Hi, my name's Chris Lin with Mandy and Candy. We teach kids Chinese in a fun and easy way. And there's uh, two things we're looking for, a place to house our uh, telemarketing team or, or to get one that's automated. And the second one is uh, we're having a uh, 10 by 10 booth uh, developed for uh, the Book Expo next year. And we need some not only creative ideas, but some executional um, items of uh, making it come alive. Hi, I'm uh, Roger Collins with the Collins Group Peel and Safe, uh, and I'm uh, new getting involved in the uh, Ann Arbor uh, market scene. Uh, I have uh, built a couple of businesses over the last 20 years, and now I'm trying to get back into the corporate world, and I've been interested in uh, working with mid-market companies in the manufacturing, distribution, special services area. And um, specifically in Ann Arbor, uh, just trying to talk to people about uh, the aging and sp aging in place market. I think that's a uh, undeveloped emerging area, and uh, just like to talk to people about it, maybe be part of it, um, and learn more. Which way? Back here. Back here. Oh. Back here. Okay. My name is Mike Newton. This is my first time here. I work for a local startup called Sagara, and um, we're active on social media. But what I'm, I need help with is inserting ourselves in the conversation, which is out there, generating buzz, connecting with influencers and the kinds of people who we want to connect with. Who are talking about things that we, in terms of our products and the conversations we want to be a part of. And so, if anyone has experience with inserting themselves in these kinds of conversations in a credible and effective sort of way, then I'd love to talk to you. Hi, my name is Kyle Mulka. Um, I'm with Congo Labs, and we build marketing tools for Twitter. Um, and we're looking for pilot customers for um, a new tool that we're coming out with. So, let me know. Hi, my name is Frank Zelinski. I'm with Apps for Water Company, and I really don't have an ask. But if anybody has any questions about Apps for Ann Arbor, and U of M, uh, come see me afterwards. Thanks. I'm Roger Rail. Uh, besides videotaping here, I videotape at uh, Ann Arbor New Tech. And tonight I'll be taking uh, that uh, expertise on the road to Detroit New Tech for their first meetup uh, yeah. at Wayne State. And uh, uh, so I'll be videotaping and live streaming there. Unlike uh, today, we had a little glitch with the, uh, in case anybody's watching, why, why we started late on the live stream is because we have a problem with the internet here. But, I'm sure that won't happen again. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie and Jim Harkamoff, we represent Go Small Biz. And uh, our ask is if you know any uh, small business owners that appreciate attorneys, consultants, but hate the high cost, have them give us a call. Evan Lowry, I work at Sharp Youth, and just here to get some knowledge and whatever happens next. So if you have any advice on how to get experience, I'd love to talk to you. Hi, I'm Jean Lieberman. Uh, my company is Personalized Productions, and we focus on, on in particular, Microsoft Project uh, training related to project management. And as I was sitting here and listening and thinking, I've really got to figure out ways to get beyond being dependent on local project management chapters around the area to get the word out. And there are other ways to do it, but I'm not doing it the best yet. So if there's help with that. Uh, hello, my name is Brenda Bentley. I have a little company called City Walks. I've produced a walking guide to Ann Arbor called River Walks Ann Arbor. And right now I'm working on a walking guide to the Woodward Corridor between Detroit and Pontiac. And thank you, Brandon, for your talk. I really like your name, Chestnut. Um, I have to find interesting waypoints when I design my walks, and sometimes it's to an outstanding tree. And a nice mature chestnut tree is a beautiful tall tree with a round crown and large leaves and uh, copious blossoms that fall to the ground and make a massive mess on the sidewalk in the summer. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for your talk. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lev Wood, and uh, I work for a company.
company here in Ann Arbor called Midwestern Software Solutions. And uh, our expertise is the design and hosting of web-based transportation database systems. Good afternoon, my name is John Walker with After the Flood Disaster Restoration and a production carpet care. And I have a question for you. Do you know anyone who needs their carpets clean before the holidays? If so, talk to me. <laughs> I'm Bob Shannon. I'm a CPA. I have my own uh, practice in the Ann Arbor area. I specialize in helping small startups, growing companies with their accounting and their tax uh, issues. 734-330-4205. Uh, any startups, please give me a call. Hi, I'm Tiffany Reisner with Ingenix Digital Marketing and their interactive marketing coordinator. I'm really glad you talked about email lists. We, did, we do our hashtags for life, and we've been kind of trying to search and find different ways that we can um, use that. So segmentation, we're definitely going to get on that. Hi, I'm Molly Dargan. I'm a senior at Michigan State and an intern at Ingenix Digital Marketing. And I'm Eric Rodriguez, uh, client services manager with Ingenix Digital Marketing, and I'm actually speaking at LA2M in a couple of weeks on uh, digital, digital PR, so come check it out. Hi, I'm Scott Phillips. I do independent consulting. I'm looking for entrepreneurs, startups, and other organizations that need help in business planning, marketing, uh, business development. Thanks. Hi, my name is Joel Bergen. I'm with Dishfish. It's a uh, uh, new service that's starting here in Ann Arbor pretty soon. Uh, we're looking for launch partners. And so I'm going to ask if you are either a business, uh, small business owner or manager, or if you're involved in a community organization that needs to raise funds for your own organization or for a cause you support. Please come and see me. What Dishfish does is we take uh, consumer reviews and personal referrals to bring warmly referred customers to local businesses, and we reward the people who make those referrals by uh, helping to raise funds for their favorite charity. So if you're involved in a business or a local organization, we're lining up uh, launch partners right now um, for Ann Arbor. So please come see me. My name is Joel. Hi, I'm Wayne. I'm a uh, web developer. Hi, I'm Steve Kropinski. I'm the Marketing Director with Michigan Radio, your NPR news station. I don't have an ask, but if any of you supported the station in our recent fund drive, thank you very much. Hello, I'm Kevin Piku. I'm uh, President of Drake & McCormick, which is a group of business consultants and attorneys working primarily with uh, startup companies, usually in the area of consumer products. And I'm here with our Director of New Business Development, actually Vice President, Manila Gonzalez. Hi, my name is Will Purpose. I'm uh, an owner of uh, Raven Education Works. It's a college counseling, um, tutoring, um, prep, essay coach business here in Ann Arbor. Hi, I'm Tom Cusarellis uh, with uh, Heidi Cusarellis Agency. We have an office on Main Street, towards Briarwood. Uh, in addition to doing commercial insurance for 20 years, love startups, can help you out there. Uh, the ask now uh, recently arrived at the agency is how we're going to tie together uh, our website and our Facebook to, to drive traffic and actually produce referrals of business. Um, right now our web business runs dead last compared to things like phone book mailers and everything else. We've got a, a lot of room to grow and there's potential there. So anybody who can help me there has been there, that'd be much appreciated as well. Hi, my name is Mary Lou Olds. Um, I'm with uh, Boulevard Financial and we um, work with products to improve security in the lives of businesses and individuals, things like um, college planning, um, business overhead expense, disability insurance, life insurance, things along those lines. And today, I would like to be able to talk to someone who could give us some input on improving our brochure. So thank you much. Hi, I'm Stacy from Dollar Bell. We're a locally owned digital print house. And, um, we do mailers, postcards, brochures, um, business cards, flyers, and all that. <coughs> our, our best attribute is how fast we are when you need that done. And I think Amy knows that, and Bank of Ann Arbor knows that, and Wanger Design knows that. So I've got lots of customers here today. Thanks. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Katie Marsap. I am a first-timer here at lunch, a 